How's it going, Mark? Good, thank you. I'm here with Mark Perrick. Mark Perrick is an amazing bass player. I'm going to put a link to the website, to his website, in in the as part of this post. But um, Mark's been my session player. Gee, it's got to be 25 years or something. 20 years. And you know, 20 years. And and Mark's probably one of Australia's top bass player. He's toured with many high end acts. Toured internationally, of course, as well. But look. Let's not waffle on about that. Um, <laughs> let, what I, what happened was a friend of mine from Nashville heard the bass tone that Mark was giving me, or on one of my recordings, and he said, "Dude, you got to tell me the see, teach me how you get that bass tone. It's amazing." And I said, "Look, I said tone is in the fingers, as you know." And I said, "So I actually asked Mark what his secret is, and Mark has developed this special technique." Now, before we do that, Mark, just give us a little rap on the bass so people can actually see that you're a capable player. <laughs> So we're playing through a PV head, an old PV head, and my brand new Ampeg Made in USA Heritage cab, which is just stunning. Um, I had the head, but I've made the choice to go with this old PV, which some people actually rate better than the Ampeg valve heads, funnily enough. Which you sounds good. Surprising it. Well, how does it sound? Yeah, what do you think of the sound of that? It just, it's, it's a very clean power. Let's like just, just, um, let's just very, um... level it all out. So that's flat. Cool. I, would, I would just roll a little bit of pipe on the bass. On the bass or on the amp? What do you think of that bass guitar, by the way? Oh, I love Fender Jazz. I'm a bit of a jazz. It's a 60th kind of anniversary, made in USA. Oh, that's got new pickups in it. I was going to say, is this one that you... Um, really? they got Brearley pickups? Cool. And, yeah, I love these... The badass bass bridge. Badass bridges, bridges are great. Yep. Yeah, it's very nice. Um, so it's been all set up and everything by Gavin at Glasshouse Guitars. Cool. Who's my, how's, it, how's the action? How's it feel to play? Probably a bit different to the way you set up. That's pretty close. I would have a little bit lower here, but apart from that, it's... How's that tone through the PV? Professional tone through the uh, yeah, it's very, the um, very punchy. Yeah, it's good. For the, Plenty of power. Good. Great. You can tell because when you you um, when you really give it some stick, it doesn't break up. It crap out. Yeah. yeah it doesn't crap out. A little yeah. bit of um, to get that real nice. Oh, is this the one that's on? No, we're on the bottom channel. So you've got a sweep or mid. So what I do low. with these is um, turn. This up so you can hear what you're hearing, yes, and then find the one the muddy one, like usually the around between three and five hundred is always a bit good. So maybe take a little bit of that out and maybe do that, and then you get a bit, bit more of this sort of. Awesome. Cool. So yeah, we were talking about 
Um, the, 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 yeah, so let me just re, re, rehash that. So oh, yeah, the, yeah. the guy in Nashville said, how do you get that bass tone? Teach me. <laughs> Teach me, El Padawan Master. And I said, well, look, honestly, I just get Mark Perrick to do it, and he just provides me an amazing tone. So it started this dialogue, and, and of course, Mark's been, you know, a world-class bass player for decades, and, and so he's developed a technique. So when you record, Mark, you actually don't record any through any tricky boxes. You just record line in, you know, in, instrument in, DI in, straight into your interface. It's not even a very fancy interface. We don't need to talk about the chain, but, <laughs> but the reality is that it's, it's, it's your technique. And, you know, we say tone is in the fingers, but you've taken that even to another level. Mm -hmm. Just explain to us the journey that you took and, uh, and where you've ended up. Yeah, look, the quick version is when you're um, approaching striking a string, you think with your right hand, you're playing, you know, anywhere from here between here and here and here. And so you've got quite a lot of area to play with. Mm. And um, basically, the further you go this way, the more warmer, sort of woolier the tone is. The further back this way you go, the tighter and more punchy the sound is. So. You know, obviously, no one's really going to play all the way back here. That's a bit difficult, but you can. But in um, comparison, if you play all the way up here, you get more around. Uh, but what ends up happening when you first start playing, you experiment a lot with like how hard you can play. Um, and if you if you ever hear like you know beginner rock bands or whatever, you'll hear the bass player sort of playing maybe more up the front here and playing very hard too. So I've heard that sound for decades. <laughs> you get a lot of the flabby, they call it flabby strings. So it's like when the string is vibrating too much and it's mm. kind of hitting the fretboard and you're getting the hit of your fingers and you can even get this. Um, mm. It's the, pick, the string hitting the pickup, which sounds pretty horrible. Um, yeah. So that's where all the clicks and pops come from. Mm. Um, so anyway, just over the years, the short version is finding the most efficient or the most optimal way to strike the string without getting too much of that flubby sound um, and getting kind of just like pure string vibration. Um, so for me, my sweet spot is sort of anywhere between these two pickups. Um, if I'm playing softly, I'll, I can get a nice warm tone up here and I'll do that for a lot of, you know, your sessions where you're playing like slower ballady type of tunes, mm. you'll be like. You can hear like, you can play softly, but you'll get a lot of sustain. So like that'll, going. Just, that'll go forever. Yeah. You know? um, but then, as you move back here, you can sort of play more punchy. Um, and what we were talking about just before was, um, instead of approaching striking a string like with your whole arm, or in the, in in this case, even your whole finger, like swinging around and striking the string like this, the way that I've developed to do it is to just using um, your knuckle as a counterpoint. Um, is to swing to the string and, and you stop when you hit the string and then you do what we were calling the the one inch punch of bass. So <laughs> in, you know, the Bruce, Bruce Lee, Lee did, Wing you know, Chun one the, inch punch, yes. The, the old, it's a similar <laughs> thing. We're doing the same thing with the string. We hit the string and we sort of, when we get there, um, we're not hitting it with all of our energy. We're using like uh, the, the dragon punch to pull through, you know, and get get a nice little punch. Mm. So you don't have to use heaps of strength. That's the illusion that a lot of people um, fall for is that you have to use a lot of brute power to play bass, and you don't. You just it's more about um, coordination and efficiency. So when I'm playing a note, my finger is pretty much on the string, ready to go, and then I'll just quickly pull through, and that's how you get the nice. Doesn't sound limp or anything. It's nice and punchy mm. and you can still play you can do what they call dig in which is when you play nice and hard you can still get that raspy kind of fret noise um, without distorting everything too much um, so yeah and then when you back off there and you find your sweet spot that's how you get that nice sort of compressed sound without using a compressor awesome so it's all in that, give us an, can you give us an example of the amateur bass player versus a good bass player again oh yeah and so, then your technique so mostly um so the sessions we'll do you know it's kind of modal music so it'll be in you know say g major and you're playing like a that's the kind of thing you know that you yeah. come up against quite often so if you're doing that running 
style, um, you'll hear, like, I'd say the, the less professional way to do it would be like... <laughs> Sounds like my bass playing. <laughs> well, yeah, you get a lot of the you get a lot of the extra additional string noise. And clackety, some, clackety, yeah. and yeah. And sometimes you want it. Like occasionally you want. That's what you call digging in. But I guess playing like that all the time, you're going to get a lot of unwanted string noise. Mm. Where if you um if you can relax a little bit and maybe move your hand further back, you can get more of a. certain amount of punch to it and because we work in Pro Tools and we get to see our waveforms that's the other thing that over the years you get to see what you play looks like mm. um, and if you have too much transient you'll see the wave kind of go bang like this Absolutely. and if you're using a compressor the compressor has to work really hard to smash those transients down mm. so if you can make the transients smaller but still play with a sort of a punch what you're emulating mm. is um, like a less peaked transient style of playing. Beautiful. Um, and so... Which actually sits in a final mix so much better. Yeah, and you don't have to squash it with a compressor so much. You, mm. We still compress it. Like, we put it in, you know, use a 76 style compressor or whatever. 1176, yep. Yeah, and, um, and, you know, you can you can give it that little bit of squash to sit in the mix perfectly mm. and you don't, you know, so you're not overplaying. I guess, yeah, you just try not to overplay the string is the probably the main thing when recording bass. Um, so that's the running style. If you're doing more of a groove, like... Just show us how you're doing that. That emphasizes the punchiness as well. So at the same time, you're actually muting the string with your left hand. Yeah, so you, you, this is very subtle, but um, this hand is kind of acting as a mute. So you bring mm. your fingers down and then this isn't changing down here. This is exactly the same. Right. Um, it's great. It's very punchy. That's my studio base. So look, thank you so much, Mark. This is this has been a masterclass on tone on bass. Oh, it's got the drop D. Yeah, there you go. Give us give us something with the. Is that in tune? That drop D. Thank you so much. Uh, so you're available for sessions, obviously $150 a song. Um, so Mark is, he's been my go-to session bass player for decades and, you know, oh, he's, I've recommended him to so many people. Um, and, you know, you're pretty well, he's pretty well a full-time bass player. Um, and he's available for sessions. I highly recommend he does all styles. How many, tell me, tell us quickly about your bass guitars. You've got quite a few, haven't you? Quite a, yeah, I've got a lot. Um, basically... You just collect them over year, over the years to sort of suit whatever the song mm, you're playing. Different genres. Yeah, different genres. So we've got active jazz basses, passive jazz basses, P basses, electric five strings, passive five strings, um, active five strings, yeah, all that sort of stuff. So, um, yeah, Yamaha, Fender, a whole range of things to sort of... I listen Whenever a song comes in, I just I listen, literally just listen to it and go, I think... This bass will suit that, and mm. it depends on uh, the song. But yeah, the jazz bass gets a lot of use. So, yeah, yeah, it's yeah. fantastic. Mark, look, thank you so much. 
Just uh, another quick look at the rig we've been playing through today. So it's an old PV Mark III made in USA and the Heritage made in USA 4x10. Um, so it's a great, great setup, uh, which I've got here at the studio. Um, oh, it's Eminence. Got Eminence speakers. Who'd have thought? They're still using the old Eminence, eh? Just take us out on something original. Because, of course, Mark's got two albums out, oh, which I'll uh, just, you can get off his website. Yeah, well, this is like, um, this is my, probably one of my well, more well-known tunes, um, Sound of Light, which you mixed. <laughs> Thanks, Mark. built on the sort of fifth chords and harmonics. That's amazing. Yeah, that's yeah. cool. It's a cool song. Beautiful. Mark, thanks so much for coming in today. Uh, I'm going to link your website. People can get in touch with you and reach out for sessions. And you're actually a touring bass player as well, aren't you? You're still touring or not so much? Or Not so much. I've got young kids now. Yeah. So I'm, I'm a bit more of a stay-at-home dad. But uh, you're gigging around South East yeah, Queensland. Yeah, yeah. I, I get around. I yeah. get around um, anywhere from sunny coast down to Byron most weekends. So. <laughs> <laughs> Mark, you're a legend, man. Thanks so much. And look, thanks for sharing your secrets there. No worries. Look, you might have to watch this video again uh, to really get a handle on exactly what's going on. But that is fantastic info. And if you're a bass player watching this, I seriously encourage you to, to embrace Mark's techniques because over the years I've had lots of bass players come to me and they've wanted to do session work for me and I hear them play and, I, and then I say, well, okay, play this, what do you think? And, and then I'll put on what Mark's done and they're like, oh, well, I can't, I can't beat that. And so, you know, there is just really no one else I would use. Um, so highly recommended. And look, check out his original albums. He's got two albums out. As Mark said, I had the privilege of actually mixing them, uh, which I'm, you know, was very, very excited about and it's, it's just wonderful work. Uh, Mark's actually also a producer, so he produces artists, he does remixes as well, uh, so pretty well, look, anything you want to know, just reach out to either to me or Mark, and, um, you know, thank, thanks for tuning in today, a bit of a long video, but I think you'll find it was packed full of great information. All the best and happy bass playing. <laughs>